My name is Vikas. I hope everybody had their morning coffee. No? <laughs> but thanks for attending. Um, I am going to talk about how to build or how to think about building a plug-in business in the block world. Let me... <laughs> All right. If you go on the plugin repo right now, the WordPress plugin repo, you will see there are over 60,000 plugins in the repo. And you might feel the market is saturated, and you may be right, but in the block world, maybe not so. So during this presentation, I would like to change your opinion, if you have this opinion, um, and one might feel that <laughs> a little bit overwhelmed and go back and not do anything about it. So let's change that perception. Uh, one of my Twitter buddy, Justin, had, an, uh, had a wonderful post about why this is a gold rush for WordPress. He said, block todays are what plugins were 10 years ago, right? And he's really on point. I definitely encourage everybody in this room to go and check out this post, read it, and then you will understand what I am trying to talk about. Before we move further, let me introduce a little bit more. Uh, as they said, this is not a 15 minutes talk, this is a 30 minutes talk. And I have to talk a little bit more, so I said I can talk myself about myself a lot more. Anyway, so I am Vikas. I am coding since I was 14. Uh, I'm a programmer, engineer uh, by trade, by heart. Uh, I acquired my first WordPress plugin back in 2017 and never looked back. Uh, I, I have, uh, basically, we run over 10 popular plugins and themes. Uh, I run two remote companies, uh, which is one is Express Tech and another is, uh, another is InstaWP, both based on the WordPress ecosystem. I'm also part of the WordPress uh, Bangalore organizing team, and we are going to have a WordCamp next month, and you are all invited there. Okay, go, link, going back to the presentation, if you closely look at the repo, you will see that there are, over, there are less than 500 block plugins in the repo which gives you the huge opportunity of building a block plugin. Not only that, if you specially search for single-use single, single use block plugin, which is less than 280, that gives you even more opportunity to do that. Let's talk about how traditionally forms were built, as an example of how the traditional plugins were built and how traditionally we were using WordPress uh, historically. So one of the popular plugin is Contact Form, which I have presented in this uh, presentation. Uh, to build this Contact Form, the person needs to have at least an intermediate knowledge of some kind of coding or some kind of HTML, right? Or at least the person needs to, needs to be a little bit technical. So you build this Contact Form, you copy the short code, and then you paste it in a page where it doesn't preview anything. So that is how we have been building contact form. We as WordPressers or WordPress professionals, we know this, but not the new users, new users which the WordPress block world is now targeting. So this is how we have been building, and this is not very intuitive. I don't know if you agree on that. However, in the block world, it's completely different paradigm. In this changing paradigm, the way you do block is you go to your block editor, you open the block inserter, search for form, automatically shows all the single-use block plugins. Uh, currently, it is showing one of the uh, plugins which we did on the top. Click on it, it automatically fetches the plugin, downloads it, activates it. Then you can drag and drop to the form on the block editor. It's that simple, right? No more coding required. A new user, a business owner can manage their own site. They don't necessarily need coding knowledge to do that. And not only that, you can manage this form right inside the block editor by just clicking on it. It's that simple, and then click Publish. So that's the way we are doing blocks now, and it's a great way, right? So how do, we, how do you think about building a uh, plug-in business in this new era? So what are the different opportunities we have? There are two approaches which I think we should think about. One is a block-first approach, and another is a block-enabled approach. If you are a traditional plugin business owner, or you are building plugins traditionally for a long period of time, 
you might go with the block enabled approach, but think about the block first approach. This approach gives you what you see is what you get, which we just uh, had a preview about. Doesn't load a bunch of libraries, basically not a bloatware. Uh, most things happen inside the block editor, which is really, really important when you are going for a block first approach. But when you do a block enabled approach, which we just saw in the, one of the last slides, they just slapped a block inside the block editor, but it doesn't change the experience at all, right? So the block enable approach says there's a wrapper around existing functionality, doesn't follow true editing experience inside the block editor, may load too many libraries. So these are the two approaches you should definitely consider when you are creating a new plugin in this new block world. There is a hidden gem, which I think is still to date undiscovered, which is the block inserter, which we just talked about a little bit. Let's go a little bit uh, deeper into this. If you search for a keyword inside the block inserter, automatically searches for single use block plugins. You might think, what is a single use block plugin because he's speaking about so much. A single use block plugin is a special plugin with a schema marked up which says that I am a single block plugin and uh, I can be qualified as a single block plugin. So how to build that single block plugin? You go to the WordPress handbook uh, and then you will find the instructions on building that plugin. You just have to put a JSON file and then uh, once your plugin is approved in the repo, you have to submit it as a single block plugin. The instructions are clear on the, uh, on the documentation. I'll be happy to share it after the call, after the talk. So once you search for a keyword, it automatically searches the repo. Once you click on an entry, it automatically installs and activates the plugin. And it's perfect for the block editing world. You don't need to uh, go out, search for the repo, click, find the plugin, find where it is. I think one of the biggest challenges with WordPress is once you install a plugin, you don't know where to go, how to configure it, right? This solves that problem. And this, I think, and this is how uh, we have built our project, which is Gutena. I'll talk about that in a moment. How to do paid upgrades in the block plugin world? And traditionally, WordPress has been notorious in promoting with big banners that upgrade today, and you will get this, and then those are nagging uh, notifications on the admin panel. I definitely don't suggest that. Go for more subtle approach. Use something like this which gives users some kind of information what they are going to get. And there should be a close button on top, which lets them close that notice away, right? So that they don't see it anymore. Uh, it should be well-placed, distraction-free CTAs. Uh, if you don't know what CTA means, is call to action. Uh, smooth checkout experience, so make sure. And this is, this is kind of a generic advice when you are building a plugin business. If you are letting the, uh, the user go, to, go through your checkout experience, make sure your checkout experience is smooth. And they go step by step and they get the zip file at the end of the uh, checkout experience. Uh, use plugins like Easy Digital Downloads, uh, which is a free plugin on the repo, or a service like Freemius to offer pro licenses. Uh, you can connect your Stripe account. You can, uh, Freemius provides that out of the box. So these options are available if you want to build a proper uh, plugin business in the block world. Let's talk about some of the excellent examples in this, in this new block world. Uh, one of my Twitter buddy, Ajay, did a poll as what plugin do you use uh, for building a WordPress site? In the, in, what block plugin specifically? And the results were kind of interesting and they were all over the map. Uh, if you ask the same as a page builder, you will get maybe top three page builder, right? And the, and the results will be completely different. But if you see the most uh, voted was other option, which means people are trying different libraries, which gives you an opportunity to build one because people are just trying every other library out there to see which one is good. And I would suggest before you start building uh, a block plugin, go out uh, and check out these uh, amazing examples uh, generate blocks, spectra, essential blocks, co blocks. There are, there are many more in the market, and they have a lot and lot of active installations. That means there is an acceptance in the market about the block plugin. Um, there are new libraries we should, uh, you should think about uh, key blocks. 
when I talk about these block uh, competitors in a way, they give you inspiration on what to build. If they are doing something right, you can inspire from them. If they, there is something to improve upon, you can read the reviews, see if there are something which you can improve upon, experience their, the, the experience which I talked about, how easy it is to use that block plugin, and then you can improve on that. That gives you an enormous business opportunities on how you, you go about building your block plugin. Don't, don't just go and start building one. First learn what others are doing and then, and, and then have your uh, uh, path charted out uh, based on that. So one of the case studies is Gutena. This is a pet project uh, we are working on. This is completely free. Um, uh, we are releasing Pro Plugin, I think, next month. But so far, it is completely free, and we have a lot of features in the free version. And that is one of the approach we have taken. Um, our approach is go for single block plugins. And this is something I'm giving away as a business secret, but I, I wanted the block plugin world to flourish, right? If we do the same, we will have a lot of cool options for people to try that helps the WordPress ecosystem as a whole. Uh, we got, so if you see on the top right, you will see Gutena Forms. This is one of the popular form plugin. And it has got 6,000 active installations in the span of three months, which is amazing if you think about it. Remember, there are 60,000 plugins in the repo, and getting 6,000 installations on a new plugin is very, very difficult. So we went with the single block approach, which enabled us to be on the block inserter market where there is nobody, right? So you can dominate that market. That's the hidden gem. And we are going with this and then redirecting everybody to our Gutena kit, which is the bundle plugin, like Cadence and other plugins. So that gives them an opportunity to install a bundle of libraries if they want. If they don't want, no problem. You can use a single block plugin. Our approach is go for no jQuery, which means going for like vanilla, lightweight JavaScript. Focus on performance because, and this is a key secret in WordPress. In coming days, I think it has already happened, is uh, performance is something which plugin authors generally ignore. And then you end up using a cache plugin. You end up using your speed optimization. I don't think you should need that. You don't need a cache plugin if you have a properly built um, uh, blocks. You don't need those plugins, at least for the, at least for the UI loading, right? If, if the blocks are loading properly, if the CSS is lightweight, if the JavaScript is lightweight, you don't need all those things. Focus on UX, as I've, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, focus on user experience. Don't just focus on building functionality. Think about how users will use your plugin in the new block world. There are some plugins where you click on the block and then you, you have to do editing on the sidebar. I definitely don't recommend that approach because that is already being done by other page builders. What are we doing which helps the user edit that form, that tab, that block faster? Think about those uh, when you are building this. Our approach towards building Gutena is four parts. One is we want to build audience first, and this is extremely important when you are building a plugin business. Build a free plugin which people love to use. And this is what we have been doing so far. So build an audience first, build uh, a plugin which people love to use, get them a free installations, get them a taste of what you can do with, with your coding skills, with your designing skills, with your business skills, right? That gives you an idea of what Gutena is, what your project is. Extend core editor principles. There are some plugins who are completely different than the core editing experience. If you, if you experience a core block, it is very swift. You edit it really quickly, drag and drop a button, you add a text, there you go. But there are some, as I said, there are some libraries we don't do that. At Gutena, we are following that principles. Um, the designing principles which we are following is extend the core block as much as possible, build on top of that, and you can do that as well. And then uh, we talked about block-first approach in the beginning. Uh, a block-first approach gives you uh, uh, an opportunity to be a block first plugin which which so the so the end goal is to completely differentiate yourself from other traditional plugins i'm not saying that traditional plug plugins are bad or something i'm saying this is a new era think about in those lines rather than thinking about the legacy ways or the traditional ways 
and then build feature parity. This is also extremely important. When you are, when you are telling that this contact form, use, go and use this contact form, people will expect a lot of thing from that contact form, which they have been used to anyway, traditionally. So it, it will be difficult, but you will be able to achieve feature parity. So understand how, how they are using traditional plugins and what are the, some of the features you can import into your block plugin. So that is feature parity. So this unlocks some of the amazing possibilities once you, learn, once you know. So, so far we have learned what are traditional plugins, how are block plugins different, and how to think about in this new block uh, first era. So this, is, this slide is one of the best slides in my presentation. This talks about democratizing design, which is what WordPress is all about now. So we have a block editor, we have block themes, we have block plugins. So what you can do? Previously, you had to build a custom theme to design. So the end goal is to design a website, right? Or design an experience, design a solution, which was difficult for a non-coder. Even for a coder, it took a lot of time to design. So design, and then code, and then there is an end result, which was like, it took a lot of time. But if you design something on Figma, you just design and deliver it. But that Figma is a design, right? It doesn't function. So going for functional design is what these three things enable you. You already have a block editor, an awesome block editor bundled inside WordPress. I know not a lot of folks are very much into block editor. Uh, they have their own opinion about it. Uh, I have my own. I think this is going to change how we use WordPress. Um, and then we have block themes, which don't need no coding. So you can develop block themes as much as you want. You just need a good design sense. And then you can build block, block plugins, as I said, if you need one. Once, we ha once you have all these three, three key components, you can build any kind of experience, any kind of solution, any website. That's where at InstaWP, uh, which uh, we are running right now, is we are creating a store. And this store is going to change the way we look at themes in general. So we know about various theme marketplaces. They sell themes. And that era is over already uh, after the page builder have come to the market. And now in the block world, that era is completely gone, as, as by my, my humble opinion. If you are able to build a good template, a good design which a business can use, let's say a car shop, a dog, uh, 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 a pet shop, uh, or any kind of business, if you, if you can design those templates really quickly, really easily, you should be able to just export it and sell it somewhere. And that's what InstaWP store is all about. So the era of creating WordPress theme is over. Combination of theme, block, and uh, uh, with the editor can accomplish almost anything uh, because it's, it's being developed, right? The block editor is, is getting evolved day by day. Um, a new market is emerging is, is my point. Um, you can use InstaWP to offer demos of your product. So if you have a traditional plugin, if you have uh, even, uh, in this case, a block plugin, you can use uh, a free account on Insta, offer a demo to your um, plugins. There is a key, there is a nice shortcut which we have built. If you replace WordPress.org, uh, WordPress.org is not replaceable, but if you replace that in the URL, uh, with instawp.io, you, you will automatically get a WordPress site with your plugin installed in it so that people can experience your plugin. And there is no registration required. It is completely free. Uh, so you, so this, this is actually uh, a big point about building audience. When you're building audience, you want to show them a demo. They, they may say, okay, I have to install this plugin in my WordPress. It may take time. There is a friction about, around it. So this gives you an opportunity to show your demo. Uh, easy to try. These are all sandbox environments. You don't need to worry about setting up a server. Everything is all set up. All right. So I prepared for a 15-minute talk. So, <laughs> this, so this is my closing argument. Uh, find early adopters. This is key, guys. If you, are, if you don't know how to find early adopters, there are some things which is really easy to do. Go to various Facebook groups. Post, this is, this is what I have built. Go to Reddit. Post, this is what I have built. Can you guys give it a shot? Post your zip file link. Post your WordPress repo link if it is already approved. Or the InstaWP link. Anything is fine. 
as long as you are able to find those early adopters who want to try the plugin. And believe me, there are many early adopters who want to try these things because they believe in the block uh, editor. They believe, they, they believe in the Gutenberg project, which is for the next, like I think seven to eight years is still remaining in that project. So think block first. Don't, don't think uh, traditionally. Don't, don't go on the popular plugins and then b copy them. Instead, think, uh, go to the, I should not say this, but go to the modern editors like Wix or Webflow and copy them instead because they are providing an experience. And that's what we are all about. It's providing experience to the user so it becomes an easier pathway for them to, uh, excuse me, to onboard to WordPress. Experience before functionality is the same thing. Design before code. So if you are not a designer, if you are a coder, you can copy design ideas from others. As I said, go to Wix, go to Webflow, go to Dribbble, go to Behance, search for contact forms, see those designs, and then copy them instead. And then, then think about your code. And then you will have a successful plugin business. Uh, I'm 100% sure. So I hope I was able to change an opinion, if you had one, about how do I go about building, uh, building a plugin business in the world where there are 60,000 plugins on the market, all the big companies are dominating it. I am 100% sure there will be a company in the next one or two years who, are, who will be dominating others uh, based on the block editor, based on the block world. So I hope uh, this presentation was useful. Thank you for attending. Thanks for being, being here. <laughs> Thank you, Vikas. Do we have any questions? One. Um, hey. Mics. Anybody next? All right, thank you for the talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it possible to just activate single plugins? For example, we're an agency and we do a lot of uh, blogs for clients. Yeah. To just activate them for all the clients? So you not the global repository, but just to activate specific blocks that they can search, but just the ones that so we want. So every to single block plugin is a plugin in itself. So it's not a part of a bundle. So you can activate it on client side without a problem. So if you want to activate on a multi-site, is that a question? Well, just uh, different kind of uh, sites that we are running that we say, okay, well, we want to have a single post mm -hmm. block that they can choose their post, uh, post type, for example, and uh, one of the specific posts of that post that we can say, okay, we want to build this for centrally for our clients. And when they go and search into the blocks, they can find it. So okay, so you want to enable some list of approved block plugins for a client. Something yeah, like that, right? Something like that, so, yeah. Yeah, so if you, if you do enable them, they will find that in the block inserter. And then they can drag and drop. Okay, so if we just add them as a plugin yes, into the WordPress. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, they are just re uh, another regular plugin in the plugin sense. But then if they, you enable them, then you have to find them inside the block editor. Next. Vikas, where would somebody get started if they wanted to build a plugin? Where would like would be the first step? I think WordPress.org has an excellent handbook on the block editor. First, if you are not if you are new to block editor world, first go and understand that how what what all the uh, various components involved there, and there is a great uh, tutorial on how to build your first block. Uh, all the tools are listed. All the development tools are listed. You can go and get started. Um, uh, I think I forgot to put a link here, but I will be happy to share uh, after the, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, we got, yes. And then, so second one first. Um, well, and what's the process for submitting your single block to the block repository? Is it quite different to submitting a plugin? Um, there are two steps involved. First is getting the plugin approved in the repository, which is like a, which is which has been a process so far. So you go to the plugin repo, search for or Google uh, WordPress plugin add, and then you will find a link where you can upload a zip file. So when you upload a zip file, they get they approve it, and once you get an approval, 
uh, you can submit, you will get a link of your uh, WordPress uh, plugin. And then you can copy that link and go to the block submission link uh, where you will have to just submit your uh, WordPress repo link. And there is no approval for that. So the second step is has no approval. Just click on OK and it becomes a block plugin. Oh, so it doesn't, it doesn't get approved like a a normal plugin would through the. Sorry, uh, it, I, it I can't hear you. <clears throat> so it wouldn't um, go through the um, the uh, traditional kind of plugin route, or is that like um, you know the, where, it, where it gets approved, where it gets um, code reviewed and stuff? While approving, they don't check if you are if you are submitting a block plugin. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Hey. I can hear you without the mic. <laughs> Hello? Okay, now. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, yeah. You were talking about building like a suite of blocks, yeah. but then also distributing it, you know, single blocks. Mm -hmm. Is there a strategy for, for doing that from the development perspective? So I can talk about the strategy which we used. Um, the reason which we went, why we went for single-use block plugin uh, individually for it, for a specific purpose, let's say contact form, or tabs, or testimonial, or slider, is the reason because they can find us inside the block editor. Once they find us, they are actually able to use our plugin plugin e in an easier way, and then we are sending them to our bundle plugin. But you don't have to use this approach. The reason, as I said, the reason why I use this approach is for discoverability inside the block inserter. If you use like a regular, like a cadence kind of approach where you're building a block library, then you will be uh, submitting yourself as a traditional plugin and it will not be a block plugin. It will not come inside, it will not show up inside the block inserter when you search for it. It will, it will come when you have activated it, installed it, activated it. The block will come but actual suggestions from the repo will not come. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I was thinking more of like, um, how do you handle it? Like, is it a mono repo that then branches out into, you know, the single block? Oh, you mean technically? Yeah, yeah that's exactly. a good question. What we have done is we have uh, used Git submodules to bundle all, because we don't want to do uh, mul multiple development on this branch and that branch. So each individual plugins are separate Git repo, and those are merged into a master repo with Git submodules. Okay, yeah, I think that's, that and, answers it. And, and the, on, on the master plugin, we automatically detect what are these single-use block plugins and then load them uh, inside the block editor. Okay, so yeah. the suit contains all of them, right? And exactly, it all it's of the them. same code. Okay. It's just bundled together. Yeah, exactly. And it is okay. actually online on GitHub. If you search for Gutena kit, all right. You will find them, so you can actually see the code. Okay, thank yeah. you. Any others? Oh, very, very top. Um, who's got it? Okay. I think you can just Whoever, yeah. say without the mic. So thanks. Hey. Uh, is the technology behind blocks still evolving? Are there any major changing changes to expect? So if we now start uh, developing a block and two years later have to develop new or so? I think, okay. Is the question about stability of development process? Oh, okay. So I think that has been a complaint in the past. Uh, every time there is a new release of Gutenberg or WordPress, there is some kind of major change uh, on how you are developing, and then you have to do a lot of development. But that, I think, is past already. Budget is here. I think she can <laughs> answer a little bit more on that. But as per my knowledge, you, there is not a lot of breaking changes uh, seen nowadays, and it's pretty stable. So I, we don't expect a lot of changes which, which, which will hamper our development process. So it's pretty stable. Yeah, You can rely on that. Yes. Um, I, I was wondering, um, do you have statistics on how many um, websites or, that are using like Gutenberg Editor and Blocks versus like um, Elementor Beaver Builder? And uh, then, mm -hmm. sorry, and just to follow up with that would be, 
Um, on my side, clients, you know, they, they find it difficult to use the editor to edit themselves. So when I look at uh, Gutenberg editor and blocks, um, in, in then looking at Beaver Builder, it's easier for them to understand Beaver Builder. Do you see a future with that on the client side? Because on a development side, a coder can understand it, but mm -hmm. I think on a client side, that's the most important. Yeah, I think that's a, uh, that's a very valid question. I don't have specific statistics on other page builders. Uh, you can see their active installations. I think they are in millions. Uh, but for the block editor, I think there are about two plus percentage of user who are using the, I may be wrong, so I don't have the specific per, uh, percentage on that. But I do have an opinion on the follow-up question. When you train a client on a specific page builder, they become comfortable with that. It may be Elementor, it may be Beaver Builder. Um, have you seen specific problems by using block editor? Is it too complex? Is it, uh, or they're already trained on a specific editor, so they, it, is, it is a learning process for them? So, uh, yeah, definitely with the blocks. Um, in, in their head, they're not designers or developers. So when they have to design something, mm -hmm. you know, they, if they can visually drag and drop it, and that's kind of where Beaver Builder is, I think, way ahead, is that they can easily create something or save out rows, columns, all sorts of things like that. They also have re, you know, a responsive uh, editor, so mm -hmm. they can see the tablet as well as mobile view. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they go from that or try to learn on blocks or try to lay something on blocks, they're usually coming back to us to, to create that page, which, right. is, which is fine, but in our sense, we do a lot of management plans, so we include that. So we try to not, you know, have the client have to come back to us for everything that they can't figure out. All right, makes sense. Um, I think means Beaver Builder and other page builders have a lot of time in their hands to build those kind of experience uh, in the past couple of years. And Gutenberg and Block Editor is comparatively new. And every release, you will find a new improvement which will help the end user use it. I think this is one of the biggest challenge right now. And I think the WordPress uh, team as a whole, or the community as a whole, is focusing on that. So I don't have a specific answer to solve that right away, but I believe in the project that it, they are going to solve it as the time pass. And, and that, that, that's where I think some opportunity can come in, like yeah. having that responsive editor or something that could be built in blocks that can- Exactly, and some that... of the block, uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, some of the block uh, plugin authors are going in that route. So even they are using the block editor, you don't necessarily need to use block principles, right? the core principles. Like for example, some of the block editors have, have provided their own mobile, tablet, and responsive settings, which the block editor believes in more fluid settings. So they have provided these kind of responsive uh, breakpoints, which we have been comfortable with over the years, right? So this is the approach you can take. It's, it's as I said, means learn about your audience. If they are more comfortable with, a, with, with breakpoints than fluidity, go for that. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? At least there are some questions. Yeah. We, thought, <laughs> we thought there will be no question and we prepared one. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you. That wraps us up. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out. First session, day two. Uh, that's a big deal. So, congratulations for coming to session nine. And, and by nine, I mean 9 a.m. Um, but that wraps up our session. So, you guys are free to go. There'll be quite a break in between now and the next session. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you, Vikas. Thank you for having me. Thank you for attending, guys.